Well, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> it's another glorious Wednesday, baby. So you know what time it is, so grab your crumpets, baby, because it's time to dish tea. And you're dishing tea, darlings. <laughs> With big meats. Hello, that's all my tea sippers out there. What's going on? What is going on, baby? I'm in the hotliner, baby, and I mean that with every fiber of my being. Today we're going to get up to like 90-something degrees, and hell, I just had to go turn my air conditioner on because a bitch is sitting up in here about to baste it on juices. <laughs> but it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. So let me thank you all for your love and your support today. I thank you for... Uh, sharing your time and spending your time with me, whether you're listening live or if you happen to catch this in the archives, one of the two, I thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my soul. If you're listening by computer and you wish to tune in or have questions, comments, or concerns as the show gets started, you can call in at 347-205-9183. Again, that's 347-205-9183. And uh, we will be more than happy to accommodate you as you will. Now, just remember, honey, today's show, honey, is going to be one of those kinds of we look at, we're getting an intimate look into the world of adult entertainment, the way it's never been looked at before. So I'm going to ask that as we get this going, that uh, you keep your questions tasteful, okay? And I'm going to do that because I want you to respect my guest that's coming on. So I don't want you coming out of a goddamn bag and trying to be sick and shady, okay? Because we don't do that here at Dishing Tea. We're giving it to you the way it's given to us, fabulously fierce, not shady or cynical. So as long as we keep that in mind, we'll be okay. The tea room is open, the, or the chat room, for those of you who don't know what I call the tea room. It is open, so if you want to go over there and dish your tea, please dish your tea over there responsibly. Please remember that this is the written word. So sometimes as you're reading it, you may be putting your own slant on something or think somebody may be saying it the way you perceived it, and that may not be the case. It's okay to be disagree. It's okay to disagree, but just don't be disagreeable. Dish your tea over there responsibly. Please don't go throwing computers out of windows or, you know, getting all belligerent and carried on, honey. Just remember it is the written word over there, okay? Now, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, show ideas, or topics, uh, please email me at bigmeach at dishingtea.com. Once again, email me at bigmeach at dishingtea.com. Our website is under development, so, yes, we do have a dishingtea.com coming along, a full uh, website. But uh, until that's up and running, you can go to the Facebook page at Dishing Tea with Big Meat, and you can submit all of your uh, questions, ideas, and comments and things over there on the Dishing Tea page as well. Now, mind you, there's two pages up there. I'll talk about that later because I had Facebook fucked up and – I had to build two pages, so I still got access to both of them. So just be mindful. You go over there to the Facebook page and um, submit all of your questions and things over there, okay? So now let me put my disclaimer here. This show is for mature audiences, and the language and subject matters are not appropriate for children or anyone who is not mature to handle the subject matters. Your listening discretion is advised. I'll repeat that. This show is for mature audiences, and the language and subject matters are not appropriate for children or anyone who is not mature enough to handle the subject matters. Your listening discretion is advised. Now, y'all know I have a potty mouth. I make no excuses for it, and so I'm asking you to govern yourselves accordingly. Okay. If you're at work, uh, adjust your volume the way that you see fit so that it is not offensive to those around you because none of you bitches are going to be emailing me or texting me or whatever saying that you've gotten demerits, you've gotten write-ups or whatever because of the content of the radio show. I'm telling you this so you could consider yourselves warned. Today we are talking exclusively about the adult entertainment industry, and we're going to move on from there. So sex is a part of the topic. So if that's not your bag today, where the language can get real raunchy, I advise you to hang up now. It won't hurt my feelings. I'll catch you next week. Just hang up now because I don't want you to get offended later, okay? So now that you know that, consider yourselves warned and govern yourselves accordingly, okay? 
So we're going to move forward. Now, I titled today's show, just like the, the, the opening song, Practice What You Preach. And this edition of Dishing Tea will take us into the world of adult entertainment in a way that we have never seen it. The question is, what happens when the world of adult entertainment becomes infused with Christian beliefs and spiritual encouragement? Now, my guest today is the person that we're going to ask. Uh, we all have loved and seen him and enjoyed watching him in front of the camera, and yet behind the camera, he has developed his own spiritual, uh, his own inspirational and motivational spiritual online ministry, and we're going to delve into that, and then we're going to get into not necessarily the ugliness, because I don't want to get very explicit, but we're going to delve into that side so that we can understand it and come up with a sense of, of, of wholeness so that we can feel as though we're educated. So we're going to understand who this brother is. Now, before I introduce and say his name, let me say hello to all of my sponsors. I'm just going to say who you are, and uh, we're going to move quickly because I just want to do this for time's sake. And we're going to start Georgia Peach Restaurant and Lounge, Southern Hospitality, and Southern Fusion Cuisine. They're located in the underground Atlanta down at Kenny's Alley. For more information, please call them at 404-348-4300. That's 404-348-4300. Trade Day Management and PR Firm. Uh, at Trade Day, enjoy a touch of Southern Hospitality and a universal appeal. For all of your public relations and entertainment management needs, contact Travion Davenport at 678-523-3088, 678-523-3088, or email at tradepr at gmail.com. That's tradepr at gmail.com. Pharaoh's Treasure Box. Find our unique jewelry and sensational 3D silk floral arrangements, creations by TAPS. For all of your decorative needs, contact Pharaoh's Treasure Box at 248 248- 688-5178 or 5179, 248-688-5178 or 5179, or email at Treasure Box at yahoo.com. Again, that's Pharaoh's Treasure Box at yahoo.com. Parisian Wine Productions, music to lighten your spirits and lift your soul, specializing in gospel house and inspirational dance music production. For all of your Christian or church social needs, contact Paris Hairston at 646 646- Two four three nine three nine six. That's six four six two four three nine three nine six. Each of Vidal Couture. Enjoy high fashion with a luxurious twist. Step into the future with fresh, innovative couture. Designs by Miss Michi DeVale. For more information, contact Michi at 313-996-9807. 313-996-9807. Or go to facebook.com forward slash Michi DeVille, M-I-C-H-I-E-E-D-E-V-A-L-E. Big Brothers Network, a new online web magazine designed to show the world and class the style and the class of the debonair man of size and all of his admirers. For more information or to catch the latest edition, go to www.bigbrothersnetwork.com. Once again, that's www.bigbrothersbrothersnetwork.com. The CABC. See, the Caribbean Boys Entertainment. We cater, promote, entertain, and provide special services with the Caribbean swagger. Island fever on the mainland. Bam, bam. Mr. Silvano T. DeMarco is the CEO and founder of the CABC. And for more information, please contact Silvano at CaribbeanBoysATL at Yahoo.com. That's CaribbeanBoysATL at Yahoo.com. Or go to Facebook.com forward slash Silvano T. DeMarco. S-Y-L-V-A-N-O-T. D M A R C O. Kissing After Dark. Kissing After Dark is Atlanta's premier social events for all of those who are tired of the same old party scene. These events are across the ATL where the grown and sexy can become the seasoned and sophisticated. For more information, please go to the Facebook page at Facebook.com. Kiss in After Dark. That's K I S S in After Dark. Swirl Films, the number one urban film production company specializing in all areas of film production, including directing, producing, script writing, budgeting and scheduling, production assembling, and post-production. For more information, please contact Eric Thomasunas, Russ Parr, or Keith Neal at 910-798-2934, 910-798-2934, or go to their webpage at www.swirlfilms.com. Once again, that's www.swirlfilms.com. 
All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of my sponsors. Because without you, there is no me. How about that? Ha ha. See, we we all got to learn to do this together. So now, without any further ado, as I said, honey, we've all loved. We've watched this man do his business, take care of business, do his thing in front of the camera. However, I want to find out who the man is behind the camera, behind the persona, behind all of what we perceive to be arrogant, rough, tough, top, and all of those things. So without any further ado, my guest today is none other than, he now calls himself Kevin Moss, but we know him as Flex Dion. So without that, let me bring you in. Come on now, women, women thing. There we go. Hey, Flex, you there? Wait a minute. Feel it, man. There we go. All right, I got you, I got you. You know, this doggone thing is wanted to act a little that way. But we're there. Hey, baby, how are you? Well, man, I'm blessing highly, baby, as I always say. And um, I'm just giving um, all honor and grace to God for being here, for um, being able to be on your show this, this morning, Thank or this afternoon. Thank you for having me. And um look forward to um, what's coming. Well, all right, then. Well, that's a beautiful way to start the segment. Okay, we're going to give thanks and honor and wonderful way to start that off. Okay. Well, let me say thank you for for being willing to come on and to basically open yourself up. You know, as entertainers, I know that, you know, we want to keep our images and our public persona just that because we want to make sure that we keep our private lives private. And I say we because I'm, in, I'm in, as an actor and a singer and all of that other stuff, and now author. Um, you know, we want to keep our private life private so we can have something to ourselves. So I thank you for being willing to come on to, to be willing to open up as far as you want to open so that folks can understand who you are. So uh, let's start at the beginning, because, of course, every, everything starts at the beginning. Let's give uh, a little background information on you. Okay. Um, is the beginning? Well, I'm I'm uh, Kevin, aka Flex, and um, I hail from Miami, Florida. Um, was born and raised down in Miami, and then after um, graduating, I listened into the United States Air Force, and I did a 13-year um, career in the military. After that, I got out of the military. I decided that I had enough, and it was time to uh, pursue some other avenues. And so I got out, and I um, went back to school. I studied music at um, Florida A&M University. And then after my tenure there um, at Florida A&M, moved back to Miami, where um, I um, became a minister of music in church, as well as a law enforcement officer, and it was there... Um, Doing that for a number of years. And then afterwards, um, while in church one day, I was sitting there and I began to hear some very negative um, things being said from the pulpit. And I say negative. Um, it may have been positive to the individuals saying it, but I, I said it was negative because anytime time um, we speak and we make a person feel unwelcome, unwanted, um, based on who they are as an individual, um, and then those things become negative. God, he loves everybody, and um, God is mm-hmm. love. And so mm-hmm. I did say while sitting there on the Oregon um, bench, I said, Lord, if you give me the opportunity, I will go and let people know that you still love them. Well, I didn't know that God was going to allow me to go in the areas that I went. You know, sometimes uh, we try to confine God to a box, but I've come to realize oh, God. that can't come we can't confine him to a box because he's too big to be placed inside of a box. And so he allowed me to um, leave there, and then I eventually um, got into involved in the adult entertainment industry. First I started with um, magazines, and then eventually went on to the, um, to the video to the screen. And then while in the midst of that, then the Lord began to uh, place a, a, a seed down into my heart, and... Um, while out in California, um, I realized that um, a lot of the 
brothers in, in the gay community the very distance. Um, there was an opportunity at times when I would uh, be chatting online, and um, while chatting online, I would, um, you know, connect with a person. I said, hey, man, what are you doing this weekend? And I said, because me and my partner, we're going to be, um, you know, barbecuing and, and uh, watching a game. Why don't you um, come on out here where we stay inside? So they said, well, where do you live? And I said, well, we live out here in um, Ontario. It's in Ontario, California. It says, Ontario mm-hmm. is way out there. Well, I heard that so many times until I became offen- offended. Because um, if anybody familiar with Southern California, um, Ontario was just a suburban area um, of Los Angeles. And so I told him, I said, you know, um, I began to say, you know, Lord, I'm I'm kind of a little concerned about this thing. I said, there's times that um, individuals will drive um, no more than 15 minutes in a circular radius for some um, for some sex, but we want uh-huh. to have more than that, for some good, wholesome conversation and fellowship. You know, I feel that a lot of times we as men have missed things in our life, and the reasons why we have went through um, some things and unnecessary things are because we fail to connect with each other. Um, we fail to just be open and honest and, and, and dialogue with each other. You see, me sometimes, uh, Big Meech, there's sometimes um, um, I may have went through something um, maybe this week or last week, and then come next month, you might be getting ready to go through something similar. And mm-hmm, if you mm-hmm. sit down and dialogue and talk, you see, um, what you're going through, you may not know how to how, how to make it through. And so when we talk and dialogue, I can say, hey, man, yeah, man, I, I've been through that, man, and, and this is what happened. This is how I overcame. And then that there is how it blesses you, and you're able to overcome those things. So that's one of the things I begin to say. So I said, Lord, you know, I can be part of the problem, or I can be part of a solution. And so I chose to be part of the solution. And so I decided that, you know what I'll do? Maybe once a month I'll invite a few brothers over to the house where we'll have um, a potluck on Sundays. We'll just all you know, bring some food. And we'll just sit down because, mm-hmm. you know, whenever whenever you say food, we like food. You know, um, black folk, we like food, okay? <laughs> right, so, right. And so um, from that one little idea, six years later, Brothers in the Spirit is still standing. And I just give God all the glory because the, the, the organization, man, has helped, has saved countless of individuals' lives. There's, you know, so many times I get emails and, and, and individuals, you know, who says, listen here, man, you know, I was about to end it all. I was about to take my life because I felt that nobody cared for me, nobody loved me, my wife um, didn't know about me or this and that, and I um, just so happened to stumble upon um, um, the, the website, the ministry. And um, it changed my life. And sometimes I look up and say, God, why me? You know, I mean, you could have picked anybody else. I mean, but you mm-hmm. really got the biggest, uh, you know, the biggest freak in the world or somebody just to kind of, you know, play in ministry and, 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 um, and things like that. And so, but, you know, when I begin to say, you know, God, why me? Then um, a best friend of mine one time, you know, asked, you know, he heard me ask the question. He said, why not you? You see, sometimes Mm -hmm. we put emphasis on us, but the emphasis shouldn't be placed on us. It should be placed on God. And so I'm just, you know, excited about what the Lord is doing, and um, and I'm just here to say that um, if you just allow Him, you know, put on if you if you if if you if you if you um and not afraid, and allow God to just you know (laughs) be the head of your life. um, I tell you, it's going to be an interesting ride. Put on your seatbelt. And um, it's going to be fun. And so um, here we are today, man. Interesting. Well, let me add this, because the question that you said was, why me? You know, here I am, one of the biggest freaks, honey. But remember, Mary Magdalene, honey, was touched. All she, You know, the woman with the blood, all she needed was just a touch. And everything had ended up changing. So perhaps... You know, you were one of the vessels needed, particularly within the adult entertainment industry, for us or those of those who look at the adult entertainment entertainment industry as just this ball of carnality and I'm going to say sinful ways. I don't subscribe to them much anymore, but um 
for those who look at it in, in, in all of its negativity, perhaps you need to be one of the vessels as a beacon of light in that arena. Now, let's go here because I want to touch on something. Because what was it that drove you to the armed forces? And first let me say thank you for your service because many of our armed forces or our veterans don't get the thanks that they deserve for doing something that I don't have the strength to do. I, I No, I'm not courageous enough to, to, to do that. So thank you for your service uh, and, and serving the country. But what was it that drove you there? And what was the transition to go from there to the adult industry? What was that connection? Well, thank you, man, for your um, your um um, thanks, you know, for the service and all that. And um, when I was in in high school, my twelfth grade year, you know, during your eleventh, twelfth grade year, um, you're preparing uh, for college. You're having to take the different exams, um, um, college entry exams and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so my twelfth grade year, um, I remember at some point in time, my mom asked me. She says, um, "Where are those um, letters and those things?" Um, that you're supposed to be bringing home for college. Because I had two sisters that had graduated the year before me, so mom, she was up on all that stuff. And so I would say it's in school in my locker. And so she was like, well, what is it doing in your locker? Um, you're supposed to be bringing it home. And so I said, I made the statement, I said, I don't want to go to go to college. You see, I had perfect attendance in my 12th grade year, believe it or not, perfect attendance in school. Mm. Now, that was, um, I won't say it was crazy, but it was either the fact that I just didn't want to get out the house or I just loved school, one of the two. And so, um, but nevertheless, I said, Mom and Dad, I don't want to go to college. And they said, well, you are going to college. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm going into the military. And I felt that um, the military was my way out. I was, uh-huh. I was a Christian, I mean, not, not a Christian, but I was a preacher's kid. I grew up in a in a really strict religious home in the church, and there were things, you know, back there in those days, the church was different from what it is today. You couldn't mm-hmm. do things. You couldn't play outside on Sundays. You you couldn't go to movies. You couldn't go to um, to um, sports events and different things. Like, there were so many rules and stuff until it was just about to drive me crazy. So I figured that the military was going to be my way out. Um, I graduated one year early, and so um, mom and dad, and they were like, you're not going to the military. I says, yes, I am. They says, well, we're not going to sign for you to go. I said, it's no problem. I'll wait until next year, and I'll sign my own stuff in, and I'll be up out of there. Now, the reason I was saying this is because the Bible says that, you know, honor your mother and your father that your days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God give it thee. And I figured that, you know what, I want to at least, do what the word says in terms of being, you know, um, honoring your parents. But also, mm-hmm. if I leave, when I leave home, I want to leave home the right way, because you never know when you will have to come back home. And as the old folks used to say, I don't want to leave home my mom and dad and break my plate. In other words, saying that you're never All right, going to come back. And so I figured that I would, you know, leave home the right way. So somehow or another. Mom and dad must have had some discussions about me when they went to bed, you know, um, a few after that. Because shortly after that, they came and said that we're going to allow you, we're going to let you go into the military. And so that's when I went into, um, you know, the Air Force. And um, so that there was the, the, the thing that drove me into the military. The fact was that, you know, I was sick of school because I figured if I would have went to school then, I was going to waste their time, I mean, their money and my time. And so um, the military would have been, you know, the best thing. Also, it gave me, I figured, a career. It gave me a job, and it put some money in my pocket. And then I was able to see the world um, um, wherein I probably wouldn't have been able to see as much of the world as, you know, at that time as a a young um, guy coming out of school. Now, the transition from that, I did not go directly from the military to the adult entertainment industry. Um, I think it was uh, somewhere around about um, eight, nine years or later before I transitioned into the adult industry. After I left um, the military, like I said earlier, I went back to school. And um, then from school, I moved back home to Florida, and then I um, became a, a law enforcement officer, a correction officer down there, and um, also a minister of music. And so from that I transition into the adult industry. Really? 
Now, that's an interesting transition. Now, let me ask this, because here's what, what I'm hearing, and I wanna, I'm, I'm, I'm just putting pieces of a puzzle. Would you see your involvement into the adult entertainment industry as a form of rebellion because of your, I'm going to say that you were Pentecostal, because everything that you just said, I know Pentecostal church, and we couldn't listen to Michael Jackson, and we couldn't do this, and Lord have mercy, and the girls had to make sure they came with the skirts down to two inches below the knees, and this, that, and the third. So with that, do you see that you... Uh, were in a form of rebellion, or was it that you got a taste of what, the, quote, unquote, the world was during your military days and just decided, well, let me branch off into this? So what mm, What was that? Well, first of all, I, it was, we wasn't necessarily Pentecostal. We was a step um, below that. We were apostolic holiness, and there's a main Apostolic difference. holiness primitive. There's a main yes, difference Lord. between Pentecostal and, quote, unquote, holiness. Holiness means that you are next to God, okay? Yes, <laughs> you know, Lord. Um, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you, stay in, you stay in church all day and all night, all Sundays, and, you know, that's, that's holiness. And, you know, um, and so basically that's what we were. <laughs> um, but, no, when I was um, when I was a teenager, young teenager, um, we had a – a, a a neighbor who had came and stayed with us for a few. She was a, a lady who was um, a, a case of domestic violence. And so when mm-hmm. she came to stay with us, of course, um, she went to church. My mom took her to church with us, and, and, and she had to get, quote, unquote, saved. And so yeah. when she came down, um, she had a shakedown. Mom went through her stuff and, and, and and confiscated a, a video and a magazine, um, an adult video rather, and a and a, and a um, adult magazine. And so somehow or another, I got wind of it that um, this here stuff was somewhere in my mom's room. And so when my mom and them had left home or whatever, I went on a scavenger hunt, and eventually I found <laughs> the videotape and the magazine. And so. I remember that they popped that tape into the VCR. And when I popped the tape into the VCR, there was this guy and this girl going at it, this adult star and his, and his um, um, co-star. And they were going at it. My mouth dropped. I started salivating, I guess, and, and all kind of stuff. And at that moment in time, I said, I want to grow up and do that. I became mm-hmm. so intrigued by that video. And those magazines, and that there was the, the seed that was planted into my head. And so as time went on, as years went by, the opportunity finally presented itself, and I went for it. And so that there is the transition of how I got into the industry. It wasn't a form of rebellion. Um, mm-hmm. When I was a kid, when I was young, um, in um, junior high school, when you, when you start going through adolescent stages and stuff, there was times that I would, you know, come home and I would, you know, lock my door in my room and I would begin to explore my body and different things of that nature. Um, going into the showers in school and after, doing the after school program, taking a shower, and then you're looking at other guys and, and yes, you're, you're know, comparing and, and things of that nature. And so I would begin to, you know, um, um, touch yourself and, 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 and fondle yourself and things of that sort. Um, and so I became very interested and felt that, wow, you know, this, this is great and, and all. And so I share with people today, I said that, you know, it seems as though perhaps you were born for this here moment. Um, sometimes, you know, um, the thing that we were gifted in, I feel, Um, If we're not careful, the enemy of life will take those things and try to construe them. He try to turn them around and and, and different things of that nature. And and, and, and go with me now. Um, Don't don't lose me on this. What I mean by that is that um, I was watching The View this morning, and at some point in time they they were talking about Oprah. She's getting ready to um, leave um, the air with her talk show, rather. And so mm-hmm. um, they mentioned about um, people having a call. And so 
I can understand to a certain degree where they were talking about that how sometimes you're called, um, you were born with a purpose. And I always say, you know, in everything that we all have a purpose. We didn't just accidentally, mm-hmm. you know, um, fall here on earth or just accidentally, you know, just tumble here, where regardless whether your mother and your father, um, you know, planned you or whether you were unplanned, mom got raped or, or all kinds of things. We all were born with a purpose in mind by our creator. And so I, I, I say that, you know, um, here it is. I'm learning myself and learning about things in terms of as it relates to um, one's um, body and awarenesses and become comfortable with who you are. But then I go into the the area of adult entertainment. And mm-hmm. adult entertainment sometimes, in a lot of cases, they don't, um, promote or teach you about respecting yourself and um, and respecting others. They don't try to uplift you in terms of, you know, celebrating who you are as a person, but there's more emphasis placed on exploitation, exploiting you, and exploiting mm-hmm. your gifts and your talents and things of that nature. And so with, if you're not careful, the enemy gets you so much involved in that part of it and until you lose the other, you know, focal point of who you are. Now, I'm able now to, to talk to people and people come to me and, and, and we can sit down and have dialogue. It's like we're having a dialogue now and openly mm-hmm. talk about sex and talk about, you know, bodies and different things like that where a lot of people aren't able to do that. You know, there's times when I've, I've um, facilitated um, um, groups and stuff, and I remember in particular one um, um Buddy of mine, a friend of mine out in L.A. says, Flex, man, I want you to come here, and I want you to, it, would, would you be okay if you talk about um, sex? Because a lot of people, you know, when it comes to that, it's just hard for them to, you know, present that subject. And I was like, sure, no problem. You know, it was like it just comes natural to me. And folks like, mm-hmm. man, I can't see how you do that, you know. But um, and here it is, but, you know, you, you, you bring us back. I think that I was born with a purpose. You know, I feel that. God, he, there's a spiritual side of us, there's a natural side of us. He, he's one of the gifts that he gave us all when he created us. It's not just only life, but he gave us the gift of sex. You know, mm-hmm. he enjoy mm-hmm. sex. And so, um, you know, that there, I feel, um, um, it, it, it's one of, you know, my calls and different things. Like that. To be able to, to go there to talk. To, to, to bring things out, to show people that there you can celebrate that part of your life and different things of that nature and all. So. Interesting. I adore that answer. But let me play let me let, let, let me get into the minds of certain people. And I'm going I'm going here. Mm-hmm. The way how you outlined that just made that sound so wonderful and so this way and that way. But why is it that that's not what we see on the screen? I know you said that the business of adult entertainment is about exploitation and this, that, and the other. But why isn't it more what you just outlined? How come we don't see more actors or those who are involved in that in that particular realm? Or is that something that's shunned upon in the business? When you say you see actors who celebrate who who um um the sex yeah the just part of celebrate them. their sexuality and celebrate see one of the things about the industry is that we all know it caters to our carnal side we all know the natural man we all know um the you know our sexuality it caters to that it speaks to it on all its levels the highs the lows and all of that but the way you just explained that about how we can all celebrate it. Did it take you a minute to get to that point where you can say, I can do this now and talk about it? Or was yes, that your... Okay, yes, okay. Yes, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't start off that way. Yes, it did take a minute to get there. And one of the things, you know, you asked in discourse, well, why don't we see that? It's because, number one, um, um, we have individuals who, 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 who have companies, man. If God is not the head of your life, if you don't recognize and honor God, then, of course, the enemy is the one who's controlling your life. And so if, if, if the enemy is in control, then everything about you and what you do is going to represent who you serve. 
And so you have companies, you have um, producers and things of that nature, they're not necessarily there to um, celebrate who you are and, 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 and the God in you, but mm, the opposite. Interesting. You see what I'm saying? I always say it that, and, and I have, and I have, I still have a vision, man, um, of one day coming about with my own company. And within my company, of course, there would be so many different changes. But one of the things that um, that I would want to do is to show and to teach people how to, um, first of all, you put God first in your life, and then how um, when the time is right and persons and different things like that, how that part of you can be celebrated. We've been taught um, from from young age, and you mentioned about, you know, Pentecost or whatever. We've been taught from a long time ago, and you still see so much of it today happening, with sex is nasty. Sex is nasty. Yes, sir. You know, mm-hmm. and let me give you an example. You're a little baby, and you, and you run around, and you happen to run out of the room, and your diaper is off. And, um, and somebody says, oh, come here, come here. You're showing all your business. Ooh, look at you. Ooh, look at you. Ooh, you, you, ooh. Things like that. <laughs> with putting, right. putting in the head to that person, oh, it's wrong. It's bad. You see, when Adam and Eve, if you for so those who subscribe to the to the um to the creation story, when here comes, you know, the Lord walking through the garden that afternoon, taking his afternoon stroll, and they say, Hey Adam and Eve, where you at? Uh, here we are, Lord. And we say, What y'all doing way over there? We playing hide go seek. Why are you playing hide go seek? Because we make it. The very right. next question God asked him is that who told you that? You see, right. the enemy places in our heads that nudity, sex, it's nasty, it's wrong, it's sinful. You see, mm-hmm. parts of it, mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 and I don't want to, you know, um, get too much in, you know, what's the big sin, what's the little sin, and everything like that. But we put emphasis, negative emphasis on sex. You don't hear churches talking about sex today in a whole lot of settings. The thing that they do That's talk true. about and promote is either you're, you're doing it, married or unmarried, you're either going to hell, you're going to, you know, you, we talk, they talk about it on those levels, but we do not bring out the person who, you know, the, the, the sexual part of why, why it's important to express yourself sexually. And, and when you're with your, your partner or you're with your significant other, the things that you say and do and, and, and how to promote all those things that represent goodness. We don't do that. And I think that when we get back to that and begin to place more emphasis on that, hopefully we'll see our world changing and even the industry starting to pick up on those things. You, you see what I'm saying? Um, there, there's things that we see in videos, and, mm-hmm. and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there for a minute. You go, go right day, there because you know I was about to. I was watching a video, and it was two individuals on there, and they were really young. They were going there, and all of a sudden somebody said, yeah, yeah, bang this shit out, bang this shit out. And I stopped, and I told the person, I said, could you do me a favor? Could you pass me the remote control? Because you need to turn the volume down. Bang this shit out. You see, we emulate what we see and hear. And I feel that it's mm-hmm. a responsibility to those of us who learn better, we try to do better, that when we're on screen or whatever we promote and whatever we talk about, that we try to bring about a difference, you see. Um, bang this shit out. No, this is precious. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an individual that's, that's beautifully made. And all, and I mean, I wouldn't walk into your house, Big Meek, and just start banging mm-hmm. things. You know, what I'm saying, knocking the table over, and, and no, I have to understand that. Listen, this is precious, and if I can't celebrate my brother, my sister, whoever I'm laying down with, if I cannot celebrate them and that part, and take a, and appreciate what's laying there before me, then perhaps mm-hmm. maybe I'm not ready for that right now. You see. Because sex isn't about, it's, it's not about um, 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 physically hurting a person. It's not about 
pain. It's not about abuse, but it's about showing love and, 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 and having a very intimate moment with that person that you can, you know, walk away and feel good about what just happened. Okay, now press pause right there. Uh-huh. Hmm. Here's the thing. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware of this. However, Flex Dion or Flex Dion Blake at one point has a reputation of being arrogant uh, and that a lot of the movies that you were in featured a lot of what you were just talking about as far as the uh, the aggressiveness. What what has changed, if anything, uh, in you since that time? And what about the persona? Because if we're we're if we're talking about the industry versus being on out in person, you know, when when we're behind closed doors in, uh, individually, the industry has created the, what the fantasy is. A lot of folks want that fantasy. They want the top to, you know, to come up in there and be this very, very aggressive man and, and to sit up there. You, I believe a lot of folks have this, this pseudo-rape scene fantasy that everybody, you know, for whatever reason, or this pseudo-prison scene. Or we are now we're in a culture now to where you don't get your freak points unless you're able to say that, you know, somebody could bounce and pounce and this and that and this and the third. But what is that for you? Because the the image of Flex Dion that we know on the films and folks who have possibly met Flex Dion at a lot of the Pride events and this, that, and the other, your reputation is he's an arrogant ass. He's an arrogant son of a bitch. He's don't talk to nobody. You know, he has this persona. What is that, and what has changed from that? Okay, well, I appreciate the um, answer, the question. Uh, first of all, that's news to my ears. Me being arrogant. really, uh, yes, it is. It's, it's, it's that's that's okay. some shock news to my ears. I always tell people, and I'm not here to rub my own feathers or, or stretch my own back. But I always mm-hmm. always tell people, I say that if you um, sit down or, or get an opportunity to hang out with me in person and things like that. You most people who have done that, I would say probably ninety eight of, of, um, or greater of the individuals who have had the opportunity to do that, they would tell you they says, "Man, you know what? Um, I never thought that you were this type of a person. I had the wrong impression and idea about you." You see, it's like, "Well, man, you didn't strike me as who I saw or thought." And all, there have mm-hmm. even been times. When I and a person had an, an, uh, initially um, had an agenda, and then after sitting down and talking for a while and, and, and kind of going again deep and, and stuff like that, the person says, "Man, you know what? I'm so I, I'm so grateful for this conversation. You helped me, and, and, and you know, you may have prayed or whatever." And the person says, "Man, would you be?" Mad if we didn't have sex, <laughs> and I'm like, oh no 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 man, cool it's cool this ministry this ministry this ministry you know and stuff like that. And like I don't even see it like that no more. I just see this totally different person. I'm like, oh, no no it's cool it's cool. And and, and I you know, always joke. I said that you know when I walk out of the place and I walk out the door and I look up to the sky I say, look at Lord you know next time you want to throw a, a, a wrench in the, in the in the game, could you please let me know. Before I leave home, because see, we could have <laughs> okay. did that on webcam. Get out of my head. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and, and it's just a comical thing, uh, and, and, and 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 truthful, you know, it, ministry comes first. You know, sex, you just wait on sex, but when it comes, you know, to touching and changing a person's life, a person should feel greater or better when you leave than they did before you came. And so that's true. Year, to hear that comment, that's the first in most cases that I have heard. Now, in terms of someone seeing me as some prize and different things like that, um, I can't necessarily also agree with that. First of all, you have to understand, the, the last time I've been to some prize or what have you, it's been years, okay? It's been years. Mm-hmm. I remember the last one was that I was in Atlanta, I believe it was, and I had such a great time, and I was performing down there, and I'm not going to call the club, um, whatever, but it was one of the biggest ones down there. 
And that night it was packed, and there was just so much going on. They had a recording artist on stage, and I was what they would consider a call off the chain. And so, and I share this, and I, you know, and I, I'm very humorous and joking when I say, I, but I say that I believe the Lord said, spoke to me and said, "Listen, stay home. Don't come back down here no more. No time soon." <laughs> okay. I, I was completely, totally in my in my zone in my element off the chain and stuff. And so it's mm. been that long since I've been surprised. But on a serious tip. As an entertainer, whenever you're in places like that, and so much is going on, you don't have mm-hmm. a, you don't have the time to just stop and to just you know be one on one with everybody. You have to stick and move. You have to you know if you go to a concert to see a Beyonce, and Beyonce is not going to come out in the audience and just you know pull up a chair and order a drink and just sit there. No, she's got to do her thing. She's got to keep going. You know, so to a certain degree, as an entertainer, yes, you are expected to engage somewhat, but only to a certain degree. So for those who may have felt that, um, or whatever, I apologize, and you know, um, you know, um, come on down to Dallas and and maybe hang out a little. <laughs> but but, see, but that, that's part different. of that's part of the question because, like, to to say Beyonce, Beyonce knows that when she's on stage, that's Sasha fears. You know, um, Bobby says in his book, when he's on set, you know, that's Bobby Blake on set. It's not, you know, I'm not that person when I'm in real life. And that's what I'm hearing you say. That's Flex Dion that's on set or on the films. When you sit down and talk to Kevin, there's a whole different persona. Total different persona. You know, so, yeah, so so that's, that's the question. Is Flex the arrogant son of a bitch that everybody's talking about, or is or is there a difference between Flex and Kevin? Flex is my nickname that I had long before the adult industry. Mm-hmm. Flex was the nickname. There was nothing more, just Flex. And so in reference and defense of Flex, my nickname, Flex is the same person as Kevin in terms okay. of my personality, my attitude, and all. Now, I will say um, um, that a lot of people don't know that I am an introvert by nature. Mm-hmm. If, if I'm in in the audience, if I'm on stage performing or whatever the case may be, um, once it was over, I can go backstage. If you can give me a little escape door, I will have taken <laughs> the opportunity to go through there and get back into the hotel room where it's quiet and to my element where I feel comfortable. But mm-hmm. because of who I was and what I did, I had to have an extrovert personality. Understand the difference. Okay. And so for okay. those who may have, maybe the person picked that up. You know, he's arrogant, but no, maybe not exactly arrogant. He's just an introvert. You know, he just didn't feel comfortable in that, in that arena at that mo- that moment in time. And so, um, mm-hmm. and then you also have haters. You have people who would say any, any kind of things, man. It's just try to make you look bad and and and, and cause them to feel justified and who they are. And different things like that. So again, um, you know, for what it's worth, um, if you get to know me, um, you will find out that those statements right there wasn't the truth. Okay, they wasn't as authentically honest as folks wanted them to be. Yes. Okay, I can, I can, I can, I can receive that. Now, here, let me go here into this particular area because since we're in the industry right now, I'm yeah. about to get into your business and this series of questioning. I'm going to leave at your discretion, okay? If it's something that you want to answer, feel free. If it's something you want to pass, we could just say pass. Next question, you know how to get around it. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's go here because a lot of people who, who only fantasize about being in the business and really don't know it, uh, we hear the horror stories. We hear uh, a lot of folks who get caught up. We hear of the the manipulation. Uh, we've already talked about the exploitation. You know, we hear about the peer pressures. We hear about the drugs and just a lot of ugliness that's surrounding it. Was that part of your experience as well, or were you able to duck and dirge that? Well, um, being in the industry, yes, you are exposed 
um, to a, a great amount of things that um, are considered taboo um, um, and so forth and so on. And I'm not going to sit here and say that I was a goody two shoes and um, and and um, such an angel. Um, I feel if you're man enough to do it, you're man enough to to say it and, and things like that. And yes, there has been times when um, um, we have um, went there and been a part of that. But the the, the most um, beautiful and gracious thing about that is that when you learn better, you do better. And not only that, that if it wasn't for God's grace and God's mercy, I wouldn't be here right now. You see, mm-hmm. if it wasn't for his mercy, perhaps I may still be living but not even in my right mind. And so I'm just grateful to God that um, the things that I um, saw, learned, experienced, that it wasn't something that took me out. But um, because there, there are a few people, man, who did not make it out. Um, right, some right. Who, who were in there, and and God forbid, you know, um, they they may not make it out. They may make, they may not make it out, you know, coming out in their right mind. Um, some people go in it because they need to be validated, and then they get in there and find out that you know you'll be the hot thing for a minute, you'll be the hot ticket, but after a while there's going to be another um, hot ticket that's going to come along, and then nobody's even going to acknowledge you. And if you did not go in there with all the right intentions, it can be detrimental to you. So I'm just grateful, man, that um, the experiences and the things that happened, um, that by the grace of God, that we um, didn't stay there. But God, you know, um, delivers and brought us to another level. I'm going to leave it all at right there. Okay. Okay. Okay, cute. Now, I'm going to go here because I cannot leave this without talking about Bobby. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it's public knowledge that Bobby has written a book. I don't know if you've read it yet or not. I'm not going to get into the specifics of the book. I am going to say that in the book, he has disclosed some very intimate details about you guys' relationship, Uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, some of the lessons that were learned. What was that for you? Because the book only gives us his side of it. With whatever you want to share, what was that relationship like, and how was it that both of you were in the industry? And... You know, actually, you you guys became like the poster children for big black bodybuilder men who were both tops, you know, in this relationship. You guys were like, you became the poster children for black gay community. What was that like for you uh, during those times that you guys were in your relationship? Well, um, during... That time that um, we were together and we were traveling and stuff, of course, I had a wonderful time. I mean, I I got an opportunity to travel, see um, a lot of you know a lot of places. Um, we tend to have you know had um, the pick of the litter at our expo- disposal, and I and, and please don't um, take it the wrong way. I hope I didn't offend it, offend anybody. No, um, did, 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 the litter. I don't but think you, you know, did because you, you know, know what it yeah, means. Yeah, y'all were y'all were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah you could. Yeah. It, it was like beautiful. you could have anybody at your disposal. Yeah. Yes, yeah, some beautiful individuals and different things like that, and and um and and I'm grateful for that, and I hope that they were grateful for the opportunity as well. Um, as far as our relationship was concerned, just like any relationship, you have you have issues, you have problems. And so um, I think that both of us gave it our honest effort in trying to um, make it work. And at some point in time, you have to be man and adult enough to say, listen, it's not working, and we have to um, move on. And so we both made the decision choice to move on. Now, I haven't read the book. I've heard things from the book. Um, Bobby and I, we've had some, um, you know, one or two discussions um, in reference to it. 
And so, um, but I'll just say this, is that um, at the end of the day, um, whatever we do, whether we write a book, do a movie, or what have you, that at some point in time we have to give an account that everything that we say and do, it should be to bring the best out of the person, not try to um, um, make things other than that. Um, there is always three sides to every story. Mm-hmm. Your side, my side, then there is the truth. And so um, if it doesn't come out in the wash, it's going to come out in the rinse. And so um, and there, there's another thing that um, on, my, on my radio sh- on show, I um, featured Pastor Jamal Bryant. Uh, on the mm-hmm. great one night, and he had a message that's entitled "I Had to Date Them." And for anybody who haven't heard that message, listen to that message. I had to date them, and I think I might even run that message next week on on the broadcast. I had to date them, and just like Bobby, uh, myself. We all, at some point in time, are going to have to go back to those exes and say, let me shake your hand, because I just want to say thank you. I learned so much for being involved with you. Thank you. Thank you for whatever, you know, it's worth. That person is a part of our stair stair steps. Mm-hmm. Every, every mm-hmm. last one of us, we have somebody in our past, in our life, that if we remove them, okay, and just kept everything else in our life, but remove them, we wouldn't be where we are today, okay? But it was a part of the learning process. And so um, um, I hope that answers your question. And, um, <laughs> and, 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 and uh, again, I haven't read the book. I've only heard bits and pieces, you know, he say, she say. Um, from what was presented to me, it was not the truth, and I was uh-huh. very disappointed. Um, I was very disappointed from what I heard. And so, um, but, it, but at the end of the day, you know, um, it doesn't stop who you are, and God is going to still get the glory out of everything in the end. So there you go. All right. All right, now let me go here because still I'm still in the industry mm-hmm. because you said earlier that at one point that you would like to have your own company, yeah. you know, to where the images and, and the the spirit behind a lot of the product becomes a little bit more wholesome, a little bit more uh, uh, loving because right now, Porn, period. You know, we've gotten into this this whole thing to where it's just nasty. You know, I watch. I, I'm a porn connoisseur, so it, that's no secret. Okay, and I watch. I watch everything. You know, that, that tickles my fancy. But what I am seeing in the industry is that it's a, a lot of it. Just it just feels like it's dirty, like it's very disrespectful. Like you were saying earlier, the whole beat it up, tear it up, this that, and the other. It just seems as though we have gotten so carnal. I don't even say carnal. We have gotten barbaric. Mm-hmm. You know, in a lot of in a lot of what we accepting to be love and accepting as a good time, to where I think what we fantasize about and the actual reality of it becomes crazy, you know, in its interpretation. And I said all that to say that during um, your earlier years, we knew you to be, you know, an, a, a wonderful top. Praise God. Okay. And and have adorned your work, but this latest pick that that we know you to have done with um, what's the name of these children, honey? The new, they they relatively new Forbidden funk, funk. funk. Yeah, that's it, Forbidden, Forbidden funk. funk. We see you in a whole different light, honey. Mm-hmm. What was that for you to say? Okay, it's time for me to let the world see me in this particular space. Well, um, 
one of the things um, I contemplated a long time before I had given um, the company the answer um, to being a part of that project. Mm -hmm. And um, it was something that I had planned on doing long before that. But it was just, you know, it was the timing. There was, you know, some different things going on at the time. And so when when uh, Forbidden Funk had approached me with the, you know, the question whether I would come and be a part of um, their their project and also be, you know, casting their role, it took months before I gave gave them the answer. And so eventually I did. And the reason I did is because I said that, you know, first of all, I want to to come out under my own label in that particular role. But when I saw that it wasn't going to happen anytime soon, then I went on and and agreed to do it. But another reason why I initially had um, considered that was because there are so many times that um, we as men, we, we have a lot of issues. I think yes, we have more issues than, than the female community. I, 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 to, I agree okay. 100%. And, and a lot of us have issues in the bedroom, and um, we're, missing the, we're missing the mark. We're missing the, 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 the target. Um, we portray um, like, or pretend like we're one thing, in a lot of cases we're not. We're the opposite. <laughs> exactly. When I when we came along, the, you know, back in the day when you seen a lot of our work going on, um, there was a lot of times that the emphasis were placed more on individuals who played a top position than a bottom position. Mm-hmm. I heard I heard things that um, would be said about individuals who were bottoms. And the way that it was, you know, being said and what I heard, I began to let somebody else's issues become my issues that I went around for a long time and I was like, you know, playing this macho one way or what have you. And because, mm-hmm. you know, I figured that that's, that's the way, you know, you, you, you get points, you know. If you say that you this, you know, you get points. If you say that you're that, you lose your points or what have you. And so I remember one day being – at this particular, well, I won't, uh, yeah. One day I decided it was time now to stop lying to the world. Mm. And I felt that if people saw someone who they kind of looked up to or ascribed to saying, you know, being, you know, themselves, then maybe perhaps it would give a lot of brothers the courage to be themselves. And so that's when I, you know, um, it happened, you know, and I hope that, you know, and I, and I got a lot of, you know, uh, praises. I've got a lot of um, positive um, compliments that came from that project. And at the end of the day, I just hope that it causes a lot of brothers to be able to say, you know what, this is who I am. This is what I enjoy doing. And it's okay to be me. And it's okay to do me, you know. How about so that? That's what that was all about. Well, how about that? Yes. Well, okay. I have Until someone you in. It when you get up out of that bed as a man, when it's all over. Now, see, see, I was not gonna even go there. <laughs> <laughs> because, oh, see, that's a whole nother show. This whole masculine machismo bullshit that we as men subscribe to. And feel as though we have to live up to because I think it gives us false intentions. It gives us a false a false sense of self. It just it's just false because everything that's supposed to be hard and this that, and the other, if we don't hold that one hundred percent, then it is it is it is looked upon as weak and it's looked upon as everything else. When we all know that feminine energy. It has been the strongest energy. We praise women all the time for their strength in this. The woman rules the world. The woman's the mother. And we know that feminine energy is the strongest energy there because of what women have endured. So for men mm-hmm. not to embrace their feminine energy because we all have both masculine and feminine, it just yes. seems to be crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? So yes. the whole thing of, 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 of getting up out the bed and, and, and not wanting to be bitched out, 
You know, mm-hmm. yeah, that sounds good. But we enthralled and this, that, and the other. And, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm using these words and all of what I'm going through, and while I'm with you. But when it's all said and done and it's over and we got to shower and get the nut off of one another and carry it on and put our clothes back on, the the bills don't come to say you got bitch out. That's the bitch out bill or that's that's that that's the man uh, bill. It don't come like that. No. So, oh. All right, all right. I I could get on the soapbox in a minute. <laughs> uh, someone. <laughs> Someone was asking, why is there not more big guys in the adult entertainment industry, meaning men of size, not just the bodybuilders, but men of size that got built beer, gut, beer guts and carried on? And I would love to hear your interpretation on it. I always say that it's a product that don't praise its own pond. Okay? Ooh, well, how about if you that don't one? like it, who? if you don't like it, who will? You see? And I feel that everybody is not into muscles. Everybody is not into um, one particular kind. And I think that we should celebrate who we are, not just only celebrate who we are. We should celebrate everybody. And so when we have more companies, more producers, more directors who look at everyone um, as equal in terms of celebrating that person, their, whether it be their size, their makeup, then um, we'll see a lot of that change. Now, I will say this, is that when it comes to um, um, being on film and, and presenting in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sexual um, kind of way, one of the things that you have to, you know, begin to ask the question is, is that will this sell? You know, um, everything and everybody won't sell. You know, I won't sell in every in, in every setting. Um, you won't sell in every setting. The, the, the best of us won't sell in every in every market. So we have to determine, okay, what is it that I want to promote? What is it that I'm trying to sell? And will this here product, you know, um, move units and different things of that nature? Um, so again, um, there that that there is the only. You know, um, definitive answer that I can give right there on that. Uh, if it was my company, then I think I would entertain that their um, question, and I think I would perhaps, you know, from time to time, come out with projects that's going to represent every every um, um, body type, makeup, size, or what have you. Well, okay, I've had to switch phones, so if I sound a little distant, that's why my other phone got all crashed with me. But all right, well then, that there is cute. Then we, I can get on that a little bit later because of what I want to go to now is the trailer that you spoke about it earlier with uh, understanding your calling and understanding how you were led to create this ministry, coming uh, and still being in the adult entertainment industry. Here is. All right, I'm, wait a minute. Okay, I'm back. My other call just dropped. All right. Here was the question. Mm-hmm. Most everyone that I've said this to, and they and they wanted me to, if I could get Bobby on, they want to ask him the same thing because both of you guys have become very, very profound. Bobby's pastoring and our assistant pastoring. You have your own ministry. What is the message that you guys are teaching your congregation? From your places of 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 lecture, what is it that you that you're teaching and going forth? That has been my number one question that everyone has asked me to make sure that I ask what they teach you. How are they gonna be in this business and they doing it? What the Lord have? What kind of message they teach and they flock? So here we is. What is the creed of brothers in the spirit? Okay. Um. When well, brothers in the spirit. Um, when you um, go there to the website, it's empowering brothers with tools and knowledge to change their world, to put it all in mm-hmm. a nutshell. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, uh, everybody's world 
may not necessarily be the same. It's how you, when you step outside of your door in the morning, it's how do you view life, you see, mm-hmm. um, through your own two eyes. Um, do you um, look at life as, as one way or another, uh, a different way? Now, um, the tools, for instance, let me give you an example of the tools. The tools merely can be something like this. Um, you driving down the street in your car, and then all of a sudden, somebody comes up to you or comes up to the light, and they throw you the finger, and they pull off, yo, faggot. You know, the tool is that I don't have to go after you. I don't have to flip the finger back at you. I can look at you, hear what you say, and then I can say to myself, that person had an issue that has nothing to do with me, and they had that issue long before they got up out of the bed this morning. So, therefore, I don't have to ascribe to that. It's not what they call you. It's what you answer to. And I can let that person go right on, head on, and, 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 and you know, continue on their way. At some point in time, life is going to teach them that you don't just walk up to people and just disrespect them for no reason at all. You know, so mm. those are examples of tools. But, again, you know, um, the mission that, you know, um, Brothers in the Spirit did, it's an organization that's designed to help individuals who are gay, straight, bisexual, or sexually confused, Christian men and women reconcile their spirituality with their sexual orientation and to assist with everyday challenges as it pertains to daily living and to provide a safe atmosphere for Christian fellowship. Now, we believe that by changing or challenge, we believe that we are challenged daily in our homes, communities, work and place, and workplaces and church, not churches, but social circles, and in our personal relationship with God. And our organization, Brothers in the Spirit, will effectively teach you how to live a victorious and fun-filled life as a Christian, gay, or straight individual. That's basically uh, it all in a nutshell. That's what, that's what we try to teach. Well, I say all right. I say all right then. So now, what has been your greatest critic or your greatest critique that prepares you forward that you could use as a stepping stone? What has been my greatest critic? Mm -hmm. Um, The Pharisees, as Jesus put it back in his days. Basically, my my biggest um, critics have been the church. Oh, really? Yes. It's been the church. That doesn't necessarily no. surprise me, but at the same time, it, it gives me an, an mm, uh, a you don't say moment. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Is it because they know your business? See, this is this is where it gets tricky because, you know, everyone – I always use this as an example. I, I, I when I tell the story of the talents, and when Jesus talked this parable, the way how it's taught in, in the Bible, and I stress that the way how it's taught in the Bible, when Jesus gave the the, the, the parable of the talents, never once did he say what the talents were. He just said that this one had ten, this one had five, and blah blah. When they went out, they came back, and the talents were doubled. Mm-hmm. For the the two that went out, the one that buried them because they were scared to use them, got stripped of them talents. They were given to the two that used them. Not one time did it say what kind of talents that the kids had, or whether they were good, bad, indifferent, or whatever. He just said talents. So in this particular case, when it comes to the adult industry, and we all know some talented children on this on the film. Now let's just be honest. That's why we keep buying. That's why we keep written. We have our favorites because we like what they do. We like how they present it. We like the body. We like all of that. So what is it that you do or what? how did you combat it when folks come to you like that and be like, okay, well, you know, well, you in this industry and you can't possibly be knowing the Lord because you, because if you did, you ain't saved because you left that and blah, blah. What do you say to all that? Um, not much at all. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, it's sometimes you, you have to pick your battles. Dig you know, it. In life, you have to you have to pick your battles. 
And there are some battles that aren't worth wasting time over. Um, but you better say that. You see, um, no, I, was, I was talking with someone recently, um, and they had asked me, they got on the, the, the question, it says, um, what, what, what's going on with that, um, the, 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 the pastor down in Atlanta? And right away, I knew exactly who they were talking about. And so um, they said, you know, it's a shame that people would try to come out the folk and, and to say those things. And God, he, he ain't pleased with that. You know, he's going gonna, gonna to try to make make it seem that, you know, things are happening. So I, I, I said, the, the part I said, um, let me ask you a question. Are you inferring that the individuals who uh, filed this here case, I say, by the way, that, 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 that case is about to go to trial. Um, it hasn't, you know, um, happened yet, but they're about ready to go to trial. And I said that. Um, so are you inferring that the people who, the ones who filed um, this here um, lawsuit, that they're not telling the truth? And they said, well, I'm not saying that, but I just think that, you know, that 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 you should you, you should do things you shouldn't do. I said, well, what if they came forward and they say that the pastor was guilty and found out to be guilty, and then of course mm-hmm. they created another thing. I said that at the end of the day, I said that we can we have to step outside of what we've heard, what we think, what we believe. And stuff, and you know, it says, well, I, they are, they, they just need to pray. They just need prayer. And I says, well, first of all, uh, again, this is the thing that the church has been saying for so long about praying, praying, praying. If the, the, those guys are like that, they need to pray. Pray, I said, pray for what? I said that the <laughs> church has been praying all of these years, and the more they pray, the more homosexuals. Are, are coming forward. It's not changing the person's sexual orientation. You can pray until you are blue in the face. You are, like baby kids, they multiply and ain't going nowhere. See, I think that this is an opportunity that I feel that God is allowing to happen within the church so that the church can begin to, 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 to start some dialogue. Now, I'm not saying that the church is supposed to accept or change their their their, their belief. They feel that individuals mm. who are who are gay, um, they feel that you know um, how they feel. I say, but I think that when you start dialogue, then it will give people a little bit more. Um, 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 they give us more. Um, so what I'm looking for reference. I say that individuals mm-hmm. who go to church, okay, who who don't have much reference to what being gay is all about, they begin to develop their own thinking in terms of people who are gay. And then they treat you um, indifferent. They say things that are indifferent. They look at you in, in certain ways. And then individuals who are gay, if they don't, you know, understand fully where um, another person stands, or whatever, then they begin to ostracize themselves away from fellowship. You know, like you can't exactly. go there and have church folk or whatever. And, and then we have this thing where now nobody is communicating. Nobody is getting along. Everybody's looking at each other under the eye or what have you. You know, it's not to change how we are, our, our, our personal beliefs, but when we begin to, to establish dialogue, it'll give us a little bit more reference in terms of how we respect each other. And so, um, again, um, when I said that, the person, they just went on and they said, well, I just go on the Bible, the Bible say this and the Bible say that or whatever. And so you know what I did, Big Beach? I said to myself, right. here's one of those issues or here's one of these things that I have to pick my battle. It's, it, it doesn't make any sense to continue to go on and try to defend where I'm coming from because this person, they, they don't get it. And so mm-hmm. leave it alone, enjoy 
your beans and rice that you're eating and enjoy the you? opportunity to be here and to fellowship with this person and to be there doing some work for them and, and, and helping them and different things like that. And at the end of the day, we'll be able to say, you know, um, I had a, a wonderful time over here and, and I enjoyed the meal and I look you know, forward to seeing you again in church or what have you. You see what I'm saying? And all. Yeah, and God will do the changing whatever needs to happen. And that's one of the things that I tell people. I say that I don't apologize for who I am, and I don't take a platform to defend my sexual orientation. And um, brothers and spirit, it's not here to change anybody, to make them straight or to make them gay, but it's to help to point them back into the direction of God. And once you put them back into the direction of God, then the Lord will do the changing as he sees fit needs to be done when the time is right. If we try to do it before our time, then we'll make a mess out of things. But when it happens on his timing, whatever needs to be happening or whatever needs to be changed, then he's going to get the glory in the end, and things are going to work out the way that they're supposed to work out. Well, how about it? Now, you know, let me go back. Just let me go back and backtrack because I love the fact that you're standing. I like that. You know, I don't have to. I don't have to build a platform to defend my sexuality. Now, at one point years ago, I've read that you identified yourself as bi-attractional. Is that is that the case here? And I also read. Did you? I read you got kids. Yes, I have. As a matter of fact, now I, I have um, two kids, two daughters, and I have three grandsons. You the grandpapa? Yes, I am. Lord. For our granddad. You see, that's a whole <laughs> nother area. Wow. See, that's a whole that's a whole nother dynamic. See, that 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 has to be a part too. To to where dealing with raising children and being in the in the adult entertainment industry, I, I, it's been touched on on television talk shows, but I uh, I wasn't there. <laughs> so yes, yes, I really yes. want to, you know. Understand that dynamic. How do you keep it from the kids? And then when the time is right, when they're old enough to understand it, and blah blah blah. What was that for you? Well, my kids and my kids um, know about um, um, my involvement in the industry. Um, it's it's a conversation that we've had, and um, again, that there, like you said, it's another show within itself. Um, God gave me a miracle with my with my children. About a little, oh, about a couple years ago, I ask the people, I ask the question so often. I say, what happens when you've been praying for something, been praying for a particular miracle all of your life, and that there is to find out where your kids are. You've been praying for that miracle after marriage had broke up, me and my wife um, um, separated, and divorced. Um, things happen. And for many, many years, I prayed to pray, God, where's my kids trying to find them? But what happens when one morning the miracle that you've been praying for, all of a sudden it dials your number, and on the end of that telephone you hear a voice that you've been praying for all of your life? Wow. You see, that wow. part too, and all. And so I'm grateful, you know, um, that when that miracle came, every question that I had, everything I was afraid of, fearful God took care of all of that. And I'm just enjoying the ride, and I'm just grateful to God be all the glory for everything that he's doing. All right. Now, I just got my 60-second uh, cue. So those of you who are listening by computer, honey, this is going to stop streaming. I'm going to let Flex give us all of his contact information for those of you who want to know my brothers in the spirit and this, that, and the other. But I want to say thank you so that those of you who are on computer can hear me say thank you. Uh, once it stops streaming, you can catch everything in the archives, and everything would be right there. So uh, we're going to keep going and um, all of that. So I will see you guys next Wednesday for those of you who have to leave, um, and we'll go from there. So, Flex, I'm back to you. Yes. Let us uh, give the audience your information. Where can they find Brothers in the Spirit? Where can they find more about you? If they're looking to steal, you know, a lot of us now are looking to, to rebuild porn collections and things and find the DVDs. Give us all of your contact information. Yes, um, for those of you who um, are online, you can always go to brothersinthespirit.com. You spell Brothers in the Spirit ebonically. You spell it B R O. -O T-H-A-S, the letter N, the letter D, the letter A, 
the word spirit, S-P-I-R-I-T, dot com. And um, once you go to the website there, um, you can um, find out um, a lot about the ministry, what's going on. Um, also, I'd like to encourage those who can to check us out on here on Blog Talk Radio. Um, the website, um, you will see a link there for BNDS Jams. That there is my online 24-hour gospel radio station for those who enjoy gospel and some good word, um, preach word and stuff. Um, go there and check out um, BNDS Jams, or you can just type in um, BNDS and the word Jams with a Z, not with an S, but with a Z. J A M Z dot com. B N D S Jams dot com. And our logo is that where we jam for Jesus. And so um go there and check it out. Well I say all right. Well this has been very entertaining. And very, very, very it's, it's, it, I thought this was gonna be heavy on me, baby, but no, this is very light. And I'm very grateful for that because yeah. Yeah, let me say that I had someone in the in the in the tea room, um, Vorpalbites. Vorpalbites. Okay, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And his comment was, "An armed society is a polite society, whatever that means, honey." I, I think I got it, but yeah, he wanted to say that. So I guess if we're armed correctly. Armed, I'm going to say, what's the armor of the Lord? I guess that's where you were going, honey. If you got your battle armor on, then a lot of folks would end up being a little bit more polite and this, that, and the third. So I hope I did you justice on that. But in any event, at this particular point, I want to say thank you again. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for sharing us and giving us a little insight to you uh, behind the scenes, a little bit of who Kevin is, versus, uh, or Kevin Flex versus Flex Dion. And uh, I just thank you for the time, bro. I thank you, and, and and I'm going to extend my hand and say that anytime you need a platform, another platform, because I see you have your own, but if anytime you need to just share something, expound on something or whatever, here at Dishing Tea, you've made a friend. We have you an ally, and we would love to have you back anytime, and then we can move forward and help and help to get folks to understand their own power. And I, love well, I just want to say I just want to say thank you, man, and I look forward to um, 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 doing that in the future and, and networking, and, and also look forward to um, having you um, come on and saying hello to our audience and and, and all. And um, thank you again for extending the opportunity, and um, hope that someone in your audience was blessed through the interview, and that at the end of the day, their life would be changed, man, for the better. All right. Well, on, and that's how we're ending. On that note, thank you, brother. And thank you, all of you who are listening. And what is going on with my computer? This Mozilla Fox Fire, uh, Firefox does not want to respond so that I can see what the hell it is I'm doing. But it's all good. Um, those of you who are still with me, honey, I thank you for your love and all of your support. If you love me, tell a friend, honey. If you hate me, tell an enemy. But do know this, one way or another, this thing will go forth. I am very excited to announce that Big Meech is now an author. Ha, ha, ha. My new book, Awakenings, Epiphanies Along a Spiritual Journey, will be available June 4th, that's my that's my kickoff day. You can go to the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Awake Big Meach. You can go there and find out information about the book. Also, click on to the PayPal link, and you can pre-order uh, your copy today, and I will autograph all the copies, uh, all the books that are ordered, because I thank you for this now. Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful thing for me, and I'm very excited. So with that in mind, my babies, uh, we're going to move forward, and when we talk again, honey, I'll be a step closer to being a published author. So with that, uh, we're coming back next week. June is Black Music Month. I'm going to have some surprises for you next month, and now we're going to do that. So uh, you can finish all of your crumpets, honey, because the tea has been dished. And you have been dishing tea, darlings, with Big Meats. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.